Hey again everyone, welcome to another lesson and in this one we are looking at sick day rules. In our last video I actually linked from my website which is a blog in the public domain about ketones, how they form, just to give you a better understanding of what they are and we reference how they are relevant to type 1 diabetes. So if you haven't watched that, go back and take a look and help you understand exactly what ketones are, how they form um, and the factors surrounding that. This lesson is about managing ketones when they are forming and some of the causes. Okay, so when we're talking about ketones and sick day rules, obviously the clues in the name, this can happen when you're unwell. And when you're unwell, it can be quite stressful to the body. Um, infection, for example, stresses the body and it can drive glucose levels up beyond what's normal. And sometimes this can happen a few days in advance before you even know you're unwell. So it can give you a sign that something's coming. If you know you're unwell and glucose levels are running high, then there's some management strategies that we advise to put in place just to help you um, prevent problems. So if you are finding that your glucose levels have risen, um, the first thing to do is test. So you want to be monitoring those glucose levels to see um, how you're getting on. Don't just leave it to fate. You really wanna know where your glucose levels are at. Now, we know that ketones from our previous lesson can start to form if you're having less than 50 grams of carbohydrates a day. Now, usually this isn't a problem, assuming your glucose levels are okay and the insulin on board is doing a sufficient job to control your glucose levels. But when you throw sick days into the equation and the glucose levels are running high, the insulin in your system is not sufficient to control the current situation in your body. So if then you're off your food and drink, i.e. you're not getting enough carbohydrates and glucose into your body, less than 50 grams a day, you'll also then be forming nutritional ketones. So you've got high glucose levels, nutritional ketones, and this basically gives you a good recipe for then starting to um, uh, make those dangerous, unmanageable ketones that can tip you into diabetic ketoacidosis, otherwise known as DKA. And that's a bad place to be, okay? So if you aren't able to eat and drink, our advice is to try and get some carbohydrate-based liquids. So like a sports drink that you're sipping throughout the day to ensure that you're getting at least 50 grams of carbohydrate in your diet. Now, it's not the easiest thing, particularly if you're vomiting and you can't even keep water down. Um, in that case, just do your best, monitor the glucose levels as you can, and we'll get onto the actual official ketone management in a second. Um, but if you are able to, that will stop any nutritional ketones forming and it will give you a nice buffer for any other types of ketones forming, i.e. from sickness, illness, um, or having insufficient insulin on board. So we don't want a double whammy. The other thing you can do is if you've been running high glucose levels for a couple of days and you're aware of it, is you could also increase your background insulin. Pump users have, again, much more flexibility because you can run a temporary basal rate. So should the glucose level steady down quite nicely and suddenly uh, the infection or the illness disappears, you can turn that off quite quickly and return to your normal rate. Whereas someone with insulin injections, by all means, you can ramp up your dose, um, but obviously you've got to wait until the next one is due. And then should your glucose levels die down, um, miraculously one day and you've only just given your glu uh, your background insulin maybe four hours ago then you've got a, quite a long time uh, 20 another 20 hours say before you can do anything about it so you might be fighting to keep the glucose levels up but that's probably quite rare actually that it suddenly miraculously corrects itself and so you could increase your background insulin to try and compensate for the increase um, in your glucose levels from the sickness and actually it's something that we end up doing in hospital quite frequently with our patients when our patients are unwell we have to increase increase their background insulin to compensate. Now, the other thing we suggest doing is if your glucose level is persistently above 15 for more than say four hours, gold standard textbook answer is to test for ketones. Now, not everyone with type one diabetes will always do that. And the, there's two reasons for that. One, they don't know to, or two, they know their threshold. And by that, I mean, if their glucose levels are running persistently above 15 and for a year they tested every time they did that, um, they tested their ketones every time they did that. And for a year, they were not ketone generating at 15, 
then they can probably be quite satisfied and quite assured that that's not a ketone generating level for them, assuming they have their insulin on board. So we have some patients that run persistently above 25, 27 all day, every day, and do not form ketones because their insulin is sufficient to stop ketones rising to dangerous levels. It's still a high glucose level, don't get me wrong, but it's not enough for them to um, generate ketones because the background insulin is keeping them safe. So you'll find your kind of threshold for it, but if you're particularly unwell, off your food, or feel ill, nauseous, vomiting, ketones, 100%, and when you're first starting out and you haven't found that threshold for you, textbook answer is, if you're running persistently above 15, check for ketones. And ideally that'll be a blood ketone rather than urine stick. Urine sticks are getting going out of fashion. We recommend blood ketones now, and that should be on your prescription um, alongside your glucose strips. Then in terms of putting the ketone test into perspective, so if it is a blood ketone test, it's very similar to a glucose test. The only difference is you get different values. Um, so if you have ketones between 0 and 1.4, this is the green zone. It's nothing to get too worried about. So our advice would be to continue to monitor the glucose levels quite regularly and keep an eye on the ketone levels. Take plenty of fluids on board. Make sure you're drinking lots of water. And if you haven't reached that 50 grams of carbohydrates, take some carbohydrates on board. Um, and any, add in any corrections that you might need to do, because presumably if you're testing for ketones, your glucose levels are running a bit high. So add in corrections as you need to. If you test and you're running between 1.5 and 3, this is kind of your amber zone. Now, we need to start taking some action here. So what we want you to do is work out your total daily dose of your insulin. So if you remember back to our carbohydrate lectures about when we were calculating your carb ratios, um, your total daily dose is your background insulin plus your average rapid insulin taken. Okay, so it doesn't have to be exact. It just needs to be a rough estimate and then you take 10% of that total daily dose every two hours as a correction, so additional corrections. Now, this is the only time that we'd probably recommend taking additional corrections outside of that rapid insulin's um, having its four and a half hours to act. So we need to act a bit more frequently here to try and get the ketones, ketones down, even though the rapid's not out of your system because we're really trying to push the glucose down. So let's say, for example, you took 30 units every day as a total daily dose, then you'd be giving three units every two hours as a correction until the ketones subside and get back into the green zone. Then it's back to monitoring and correcting as you need to. Also lots of fluids, fluids are important. And if you're running above three, so this is what we call the red zone. So here we do the same thing, total daily dose, but now you're taking 20% of your total daily dose every two hours until they start to subside. So again, using that 30 unit example, if you're taking 30 units a day, that's six units every two hours. Um, also lots of fluids. Again, you might have increased your basal rate as well. Now, crucially here, if you have lots of ketones, you're feeling nauseous, maybe some back pain, vomiting, that's when this is probably no longer gonna work and that's when they get to the emergency department or call out for an ambulance because it might need a little bit extra intervention medically. So we'd much rather you were safe and even if you don't end up needing anything from the medical team, we'd rather you called us out or called out, the, uh, called out the paramedics or got into a and &E to be told that actually we've got it under control, you're all good, then not call them and there'd be a problem. So safety first, 100%. Um, so essentially what we're trying to do is get back into this zone. If you're using ketone sticks, again, it's not my preferred option, but you don't get these numbers, you get plus signs. So you'll be plus one, plus two, plus three ketones. So obviously the more pluses you have, the more ketones you're generating. There's a bit of a lag with ketones in the urine because obviously it takes time to get through your system and obviously um, there'll be a backlog in your urine without being too graphic. So I couldn't emphasize more, try and get on the blood ketones um, just because they're so much more accurate. They're here and now and you know where you stand. So that's sick day rules. So just to summarize, you might need to increase your background insulin. Pump users have more flexibility. 50 grams of carbohydrates to stop any nutritional ketones happening. So you're not getting a double whammy of sick day ketones and nutritional ketones. Then you have your different categories. You need to take extra corrections if you're in the medium or high ketone category. Um, keep monitoring both your glucose and your ketone levels. And if you are struggling to get it under control and you're feeling sick, vomiting, back pain, then call for additional help. 
So I think that kind of covers it, guys. So we'll leave it there for sick day rules. Again, this is all in our um, downloadable plan in the members area, so you can read it and re-engage with it there or re-watch the video if you need to. So we'll see you at the next lesson and I'll see you later.